everyone. I'm uh, Jerry Epps, and I'm so pleased that you are looking in uh, this evening. We're going to be talking about the uh, Civilian Conservation Corps in Wisconsin, the CCC, as it was uh, popularly known at that time. And um, some of you may have questions. We'll save some time at the end uh, to deal with your questions. But I want to read, I want to start by reading the first paragraph from the book uh, to give you some bit of perspective of what the CCC was all about and why it was needed and who was involved. So let me read from this, this first paragraph. They came from the farms in the cities, from Chicago, Detroit, and Milwaukee from small towns like Pine River and Tomahawk, Wisconsin, and from productive farms and those that were struggling. They represented a generation of the nation's young men who through no fault of their own could not find a job because there were no jobs. Many of these young men were hungry as were their families. It was a dreary, dangerous time. Nearly two million men had given up any hope of finding work. They traveled on foot and in freight cars. They slept in caves or shanty towns as they drifted aimlessly around the country, searching for a job or a bite to eat. Nearly 250,000 of these so-called tramps were young men in their teens and early 20s, wandering the land, looking for a future. And so now let's go to the next slide. And I'm going to um, give you a bit of background about the Civilian Conservation Corps, which began, as you see from this uh, slide in 1933, and continued in 19, until 1942 in the depths of the Great Depression. And this is indeed a depression story. Some of us, I'm one of them who was born in the middle of the Great Depression and remember as a kid, seeing young men stop by our farm, looking for a bit of work and a chance to get something to eat. I've never forgotten that. It was a time when things were awfully tough in this country, starting in 1929, and before that even, as we look, and let's go to the next slide, as we look back into the depression, we think about such things as uh, the Dow Jones, 381 points in 1929, September 1, by November 13, and it dropped to less than 200 points. 47% of Wisconsin's population lived on farms in 1929. Wisconsin, like so many states in the southwestern and southwestern U.S., was in the midst of a dust bowl toward the end of that Great Depression. Banks were closed. People lost their savings. And the unemployment rate in 1933 was almost 25%. And starting in the 1850s and 60s, we had a logging era going on. Let's go to the next slide in this state. These huge pine trees in the north were cut, clear cut, and hauled to the rivers and floated down the rivers to the sawmills. I've written a book about that as well, a history of the logging industry in Wisconsin. And the next slide shows us what was left behind when the loggers left. Stumps and gullies and a decimated countryside, especially the north. A terrible situation. And now we've got the Great Depression coming on as well, starting in 1929 and continuing on until the start of World War II. December 7, 1941. Next slide, please. And so we saw something interesting happen, something that really hadn't happened before. Franklin Roosevelt took office on March 4th, 1933. And on March 9th, five days later, 
he called an emergency session of Congress. He was well aware that so many people were without work. He was also well aware because of his experience in New York State that the country badly needed some concern for its environment. And it was true in Wisconsin, it was true across the country. We had taken for granted what Mother Nature had left with us. And on March 31st, that same month that he called the session, special session, he signed legislation creating the Emergency Conservation Work Program, which later became known as the CCC. And only a month later, the first CC man signed up on April 7th, 1933. And by May, they also, the legislators also, said that unemployed war veterans, mostly from World War I, who were unemployed, of course, they could be part of the CCC as well. Let's go to the next slide. Oh, sorry. There we go. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the organization of the CCC first, because here was a, those of you who have worked in, in administration, and I have at the university, this looked like an impossible organization. How could it possibly exist in national, at a national office, in district offices? But now the legislation said that the Department of Labor should be involved. They're going to be responsible for selecting the CCC enrollees. The War Department, oh, for heaven's sakes, the War Department, what are they, why are they involved? They were responsible for physical fitness training, discipline, medical care, and housing. They took care of the camps. I'll say more about that later. And then the Department of Interior, which included the National and State Park Development, and the Department of Agriculture with the Soil Conservation and Forest Service. Here was an impossible organization. Everybody looked at it shook their heads and said, this cannot possibly work. But it did. It did. It proved that something that's desperately needed can work. And let's go to the next slide. This ad uh, inviting young men to join says it all. A young man's opportunity to work, to live, to learn, to build. And underneath it all, to conserve our natural resources. Just think, if you think of the philosophy, philosophy behind this program, it was doing two things at the time, same time, saving the land and saving our young people. It was a, a wonderful, wonderful idea. I don't think many people at the time really understood how important and wonderful it was. Next slide, please. Here, here's the young, here's what the guidelines were for young men uh, to join. They had to be 18 to 25 years old, physically fit and unmarried, unemployed, citizen of the United States, of character, clean cut, purposeful, and ambitious. I don't know how they measured that. Selected from lists of families receiving public aid. And they were to receive $30 a month, $25 of it went home to their family. So they got $5 a month, plus meals, of course, and lodging uh, for being a CCC member. Next slide. The first thing that they had to do was to go to a training camp run by the Army. And this, uh, there were 50 of these across the country that were organized. This particular one was at Fort Sheridan, Illinois which was there for uh, enrollees uh, from Wisconsin. Most of these young men were desperately out of shape because they hadn't, hadn't been working. So they spent several weeks of physical training, uh, getting in shape before they were assigned uh, to a CCC camp. Next slide, please. And here, here's, there, there are about um, uh, 200 boys in each camp. This is part of a CCC crew, you can see uh, some of the ages and, and, and you can see the cooks in the front and, and so on, all a very interesting part uh, of what a camp was there. There were about 200 boys in a camp and plus uh, as many as 25 or more uh, support staff. And just to run over that, 
the camp was usually run by a an army officer, uh, a who was the company commander, and there was a second an, an executive officer also in the army. There was a camp doctor. There was usually an educational advisor. Often that person was an out of work teacher, and there was a storekeeper and a company clerk, a baker. And of course, uh, the, there are four, four cooks, uh, usually in a camp. So that was a very important part of it. Within the camp, the army was in charge. Outside of the camp, it depended on what they were doing, whether it was forestry, parks, soil conservation, they had different supervisors. Next slide, please. This looks pretty Spartan, and it was. Uh, these. Some of these early camps were tent camps, and these tents were left over from World War I. And I am sure that they were not looking forward to winter uh, to being in camps such as this one. But these, these were usually temporary and were set up quickly. And let's go to the next slide. A typical camp would look something like this. And this one was at uh, a mountain, Wisconsin. And these buildings were pretty much all the same wherever you might look around the country. There were bunkhouses, about 40 boys to each bunkhouse. There was a mess hall, a recreation building, and then of course equipment storage buildings. Next slide, please. Here's another view of a, of a camp at Phillips, Wisconsin. You know, notice how similar all the buildings are to each other. Everything's pretty neat and tidy. Um, I'm an old army veteran and I, I knew about clean and tidy. Army was good for that. Well, they were teaching these boys to keep things picked up. Everything looked neat and tidy. And next slide, please. The important central part of each of these camps was the kitchen. Because remember, these, these boys were hungry. They hadn't, they hadn't had work and anything to eat. So the kitchen was an important part of what went on at each of these camps. Let's go to the next slide, please. Here's the dining hall, pretty Spartan looking, but uh, and heated with a wood stove, as you can see. But the, uh, the meals were good. I'll share a little bit of that with the next slide, please. Next slide. Here, here's, here is the Thanksgiving dinner. I happened to get uh, the menu uh, from some, somebody sent it to me. And this was Thanksgiving dinner in 1935. Next slide. This is something else, English celery, olives, roast turkey, sage dressing, giblet gravy, Virginia baked ham, mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, cream peas, shrimp salad, Parker house rolls, mince meat pie, pumpkin pie, French pastry, mixed fruit, mixed candy, ice cream, coffee, cigarettes and cigars. This would have been far, far better than anything they would have gotten at home because people were suffering during the Great Depression, people, especially people in the urban areas. Next slide, please. This is the inside of the barracks, the mess or the, uh, where they all slept. And notice this was heated with a couple of wood stoves as well. And let's go to the next slide. I was privileged to get a copy of a diary kept by a CCC enrollee by the name of J. Allen Spoolman. And as he says here, diary of J. Allen Spoolman being the record of events over three winter months in the CCC camp, 1934 to 1935. Now, it was absolutely fascinating reading this diary. He was at a camp near Drummond, which is about 35 miles south of Ashland. And let me just read a little bit about what he wrote in his, in his diary. He was, he was talking about in this first entry, the fact that they took turns uh, doing KP, kitchen patrol, kitchen duty, helping out in the kitchen. And so he wrote this on November 19th, 1934 at 8.30 p.m. 
13 hours of work today from five to eight. Boy, what a hell of a job. How anybody free white and 21 would voluntarily to go in for a job like this is more than I can see. He's talking about working in the kitchen now. Potatoes, I peeled them until my fingers were numb. And serving almost drove me nuts. Dishes sticking out from all sides and me never remembering where the dishes belonged if I got them filled. It's the monotony that gets me doing the same thing over and over again with nothing to show for it. Wash 250 plates, cups, bowls, platters, 800 knives, forks, and spools. Set 35 tables and start over and do it again. Three times, I'll be one happy youth when the next four days are over. Saturday and Sunday will be a cinch with only 30 or 40 men in camp. Miserable weather to work in the field. That's the only consolation. And then on Wednesday, January 23rd, 1935, 9.40 9, p.m. We laid around morning today, making it a short day. It was 36 below zero. It's still about 20 below, so we get another half day off tomorrow. As long as it's only half a day at a time, it's okay. A whole day off means we work on Saturday morning. Let's go to the next slide. They had some fun too. Usually on Saturday night, the boys had a chance to visit a nearby town, and most of them were within fairly easy, easy uh, distance, easy driving distance of a town. And these towns scattered all around the state, most of them had CCC camps nearby, uh, would welcome them and they would have dances and they would have all kinds of things. And this, this was a group of boys at a camp near, uh, uh, CCC camp near Baraboo. And you can see they're just happy as can be. This is a night out you can also see the, the old trucks that they were driving, it's, uh, well, let's go to the next slide. What did they do when they were in the field? What sorts of environmental projects did they work on? Reforestation was a big one. Remember that slide with the stumps and the gullies and the hills? The CCC boys planted thousands of trees. Soil conservation was another one. We didn't know much about preserving the soil. We didn't know much about taking care of conserving how we plowed, farmers plowed up and down the hills rather than around the hills. They learned a lot from soil conservation and the boys, people did who were farmers. Fish hatchery development was another part of it. Forest fire control, state and national park development. That was a big one. And I'll, I'll show you in a bit. There are a lot of remnants of that work uh, still around of what these boys had done. Let's go to the next slide. Notice these boys are not hooping and hollering. They're off to work. And it's, uh, it's interesting how they packed them into these old trucks and, and, took, them, and took them off to work. Uh, and you can see some of the supervisors standing around uh, watching what they're going to do. And in the background, you can see that typical kind of CCC camp building structure. Realize with 250 people, uh, each one of these camps is like a little village in itself. Just kind of interesting when you think about it. Let's go to the next slide. The soil conservation work over in Southwestern Wisconsin, in Vernon County, for example, where this picture was taken, shows how these CCC boys working with the Soil Conservation Service, we're introducing farmers to contour plowing, to strip cropping, which continues to this day. I took this picture a couple of years ago, and this is an example of what the CCC boys were doing as they introduced farmers, many of them very reluctant. They didn't wanna work with this government program. Well, they, some of them did, and they soon discovered that that was a very important for thing, thing for them to do. Next slide, please. When they worked at the, at the parks, one of the interesting things they did was to build buildings. And they built buildings out of, often out of quarried rock. 
And this, this particular slide is at Devil's Lake State Park. And these buildings will last forever. And it, it's interesting how these, these young men were taught how to quarry rock and how to build with them, to become stone masons. That's a skill that's largely lost today. Let's go to the next one. And this slide is of the UW Arboretum. There was a CCC camp. Let, let's go back to, it. So, there we go. This is, there's a CCC camp at the Arboretum. It was the only CCC camp in the United States that was under the uh, control of a university. And they did some interesting things in, in helping to restore the prairies at the, at the Arboretum. Now we can go to the next slide. This, this is uh, my hometown is Wild Rose and there's a big fish hatchery there and it's been there for years. And the CCC boys built this fence again of quarried rock and I am I just marvel at the at the skill with which they put these walls together and the artistry it's not haphazard it's done very carefully and done so very well and in addition to building a wall such as this the CCC boys also built runways for the for the fish and, and all of that sort of thing let's go on please next slide Fire control was another part of what they did. Can you imagine sitting up in that fire tower and looking for fires and then helping to control the fires? That was part of their experience. Next slide, please. Each of the boys spent about a year. That was the amount of time that they spent at a CCC camp. And they got a form such as this one. This is an actual form. A um, guy named John Charles Meisel, I have no idea who that is, who was from Oshkosh. And he, he was just here in Madison at the Arboretum camp from uh, October 9th, 1940 to September 30th, uh, 1941. He was honorably discharged. He, um, he, he spent 11, uh, 11 months and 21 days. And he was recognized for his work in dam improvement uh, wood cutting and lake and pond development. So interesting. Next slide, please. Even today, we're trying, historians are trying to help people remember uh, what the CCC boys contributed uh, to this state. And this is a, uh, uh, this is a statue at, uh, at Devil's Lake uh, commemorating the CCC. Next slide, please. And there's a wonderful museum at, uh, in Rhinelander uh, devoted to the CCC with a mock-up of a, of a CCC um, mess hall. And uh, anyway, all kinds of records of CCC. Go on to the next slide, please. What did these boys accomplish? That's the next slide, please. It, here's some of the major accomplishments as I looked at all of this and I researched it for a couple of years. It enhanced the personal lives of several million young men. I, I read again and again, I joined up as a boy and came out feeling like a man. It improved the natural environment and helped the general public understand the importance of caring for the nation's natural resources. And believe it or not, it helped change the attitude toward the role of government. It accomplished a lot more than ever more than most people ever thought it would next slide please i want to share with you uh what a young man who had been in the ccc and was now an alumnus in 1985 he was at a christmas banquet and he he read this to the group uh the fellow his name is harlan harlan uh, hansen and the, he was in a camp in Tomahawk. Who are we? We are the young men of the 1930s who made up the Civilian Conservation Corps. We are the men who mended the scarred land, the eroded fields, the muddied waters of our creeks and rivers and the depleted woodlands of our country. We replanted our forests from Maine to California. We built fire trails to protect the old and new forests. We cleaned out the diseased deadwood to protect the healthy and new trees. We fought fires and floods. We built 
lodges in our national parks and campsites for our people to enjoy our beautiful country. We built roads and trails in the parks, many of them in existence today. We worked the quarries to produce the building stores, stones needed to build the dams in our state and national parks. We worked the quarries getting the rock to crush for limestone to be spread on the farmlands. To sweeten the overworked soil to help restore productivity. We were educated and given job opportunities, honor, respect, and purpose in life. All over the country, the work we did with our hands, our minds, and our bodies will stand today as a monument to the use of the 1930s and what we accomplished, bearing in mind the 90% of what we did, we did by hand. Pick, hoe, shovel, mauls, drills, and wheelbarrows. We put our mark on this land, and that mark will st still be seen for many more years to come. As a generation, we have much to be proud of. We have earned a place in history, and speaking as an individual, I am grateful for having the chance to be there. Next slide, please. Those of you who want to learn more about what I do, uh, go to jerryapps.com uh, or my jerryappsauthor.com, or you can get in touch with me at my email address, jerryappsauthor at gmail. And again, the book is the Civilian Conservation Corps in Wisconsin. It's available in uh, bookstores. It's available online. Uh, you can get it at the uh, Historical Society uh, bookstore on the square in Madison. And I think you'll enjoy reading it because here, here is a, a very positive story coming out of a terrible time. The Great Depression was awful. The more I read about it and the more I remember my own experiences with it, seeing these young men stopping by our farmhouse and asking for something to eat. I never forgotten that. And now, and how the Civilian Conservation Corps took these men and helped them see that they had a future, that everything had not collapsed around them. And with that, I'll stop and see if anyone has a question. Or a comment, I think we're just about a right on time. And again, the CCC is one of those governmental programs that worked and worked very well. And it was so needed at that time. I have tremendous respect for what these CCC boys did. Thank you all so very much for looking in. Appreciate it. Oh, I do have some questions if you ah, still have a ahead. moment. Yes. Um, yeah. One person asked, uh, how, do, how do we go about researching an ancestor who was in the CCC? Well, I started by uh, putting out a plea. I, I write for different newspapers, still do. And I, I said, a little article I wrote for one of the farm newspapers was I, I simply said, I'm looking, I'm writing a book about the CCC. Do you have any relatives and friends that, that may have been members in the material came pouring in. You'd be surprised how many families in Wisconsin have connections uh, to, to mm -hmm. the CCC in one way or another. So I, I got all kinds of material that way. And then others had, they sent me pictures, they sent me, uh, the, I read from the, from the journal, from the diary from this young man. So I, I've, I've got all kinds of very fresh original material, letters, newspaper articles, all, I interviewed several people. I, they're, they're, at the time, I wrote this a couple of three years ago, there are just a handful of old timers remaining. Most of them were in the 90s. And I interviewed a couple of them. And I'll tell you, I got some really good stuff. At, and I have all that in the book as well. One of the things I do when I write is not just have facts and figures and names, but I try to get the stories that are connected to these people and to these events. So a lot of stories uh, threaded throughout the book as well. Another question? I guess we have another one. Uh, how many CCC sites still exist in Wisconsin? Quite a few. I can't tell you how many. Uh, I've got in my book a map of where they all were. 
many of them have been transformed into something else. For instance, I was an extension agent in uh, Green Lake County uh, way back in the, in the middle 1950s. And we camped at Petrick's Lake in Adams County at a former CCC camp. Uh, so they were, they were all over the place. And many of them were transformed into something else. So you, you can still see the, some of the buildings at the Arboretum in, in Madison that were in the CCC. If you go, if you visit there sometime, just stop at the office and say you want to see one of the v CCC buildings and they'll point them out to you. Um, somebody asked, uh, I think I've always confused the CCC and WPA workers. What was the distinction? No, well, it's a, a fantastic, <laughs> very important distinction. The work product, uh, WPA was, uh, for unemployed men, uh, they could be married. They were not in camps. They worked from home. They worked on projects. Uh, and the CCC boys were all in camps, segregated. They were not in. in they were not at home. Uh, so it was a, had a, had a, a fairly different purpose too. The uh, WPA Work Products Ad uh, Administration, I think it was called, or Work Work Progress Administration. They built a lot of buildings. They built a lot of structures in Wisconsin. I remember the, um, uh, the old gymnasium at Wilders High School was built by WPA men. Uh, so they both had the purpose of providing employment for men, especially that were out of work. Now you could ask were there any women in, the, in, in, in there weren't uh, in, in the CCC. You could also ask were, were they integrated? That's an interesting question because they, in the South, they weren't. There are a few instances in the North that they were. And I've got all that in my book, a very controversial kind of thing. Miss, Mrs. Roosevelt, Eleanor Roosevelt, was a very strong-minded woman. And she said, hey, we got to get some women involved in this program. And we've got to get some uh, African-American young men involved in this program. Well, it didn't happen in the same way that she wanted it to. All right, we got a couple more questions. Um, what type of research can be done at the museum in Rhinelander? We have ancestors in the CCC and yeah, the, the, more. The, one of the things that, that you'll, you'll find at, uh, at, at the uh, museum in Rhinelander is a fairly substantial list of who was in, in, the, in the CCC and where they were. Now, as a lot of that stuff is online these days. If, if you go on, if you just Google, uh, CCC Wisconsin, I found a fair amount of, of camp listings where all the men were listed, the young men were listed that were in the camp. So there, there are several places where you can find it. But the museum in, in, um, in Rhineland was a great place to get a real feel for what a CC camp was, was like. And it it's a, it's a, has a forestry uh, uh, museum there as well. So you, you can put the whole thing together. All right, we have two more questions. Um, does the federal government have records of individuals enlisted in the CCC like they do of military enlistment? I, that I don't know. I, that's a very good question. I, I don't know that because probably not because they, these young men, although they were under the thumb of the military, they were not in the military. They were, they were not soldiers in the military. So that would probably be a reason why they're excluded. One sad commentary maybe would be this. A huge percentage of these CCC boys did become soldiers in World War II. And they were, they were welcomed with open arms because they, they knew how to follow orders. They, they knew what it was like to, to be in a camp with a, with a military supervisor, so they, they were welcome. But I, 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 there, I, the army would not have their records because they weren't in the army. And the last question is: um, somebody had asked if the shelter and fireplaces at Hoyt Park in Madison are built by the CCC. That I don't know. I, my guess is not. It, it could be WPA. Uh, they, there's, there's a fair amount of confusion as to who did what along <laughs> the. And sometimes they work together. The CCC and the WPA together built buildings. So that complicated the situation even more. But I, I don't have the answer to that question. I don't know. Okay. Uh, well, that's all the questions we have. Um, thanks so much for speaking to us. This is um, great. 
Well, and, and thank you again, everyone, for looking in because this is a fantastic topic. And if you want to find out something about a government program that worked really well, have a look at my book. Do a little research. Go up to the Rhinelander Museum. Check in at uh, Devil's Lake and see the nice building there. There's a lot of ways of getting connected back to what the CCC was all about. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.